So it's, it's a short session, just got an hour. We don't want that to stop you talking to us, however, and we've built in a few breaks where you can do that. So I'm doing this session with my lovely colleagues, Megan and Rosanna. Um, they're going to introduce themselves in a moment when we when we um, uh, get into a more detailed bit of the conversation. Um, quite a, few, a couple of my colleagues are also looking at the chat. So if you want to stop us and you've got questions, they are BDI, BDI idly uh, looking out for those things as well. So um, brilliant to see you all. As I say, this session is all about our new service audience answers. We know that people have got lots of questions about this and the many other new services that um, have suddenly popped up and are around since uh, Arts Council England has started their new round and has put a lot more emphasis on um, uh, this kind of audience data and of course are running their own new service um, but also we've got colleagues of course in Scotland and Wales and the our service that we run there is changing as well so you may have questions too. Um, so as I say this is quite a short session it's very much we see it as being an in introduction um, it is an opportunity hopefully encouraging you to come and talk to us about the bits you like or don't like or sign up um, and to tell us more about what you'd like to see in the future as well it's a really important part of it. So Without much more ado, let me just leap in to talk about what we're going to do. So really briefly, I'm going to chat through some of the thinking behind why audience answers. Clearly, that is a moving on from um, the thing that we used to run called Audience Finder. Audience Answers is a next generation um, service, and I'm quite excited to talk to you about why. Uh, Megan will then be talking us through some of the services and features. Rosanna is going to talk really importantly about the new networks well it's not the new but a, a developed networks part of that offer and talk just a little bit about audience spectrum as a bit of a trailer for our next session on the 21st of june um, and then we would love to hear from you and to talk a little bit about what's happening happening next as well so as i say please do talk to us use the chat but if you'd like to speak just put your hand up we should be able to see that as well we, it's a you know we, it's a it's not a huge conversation so we should be able to do that fine um i can't see what that says to us oh yes i think it says ask anything uh, by which i mean we're really I, I know people have got lots of questions at the moment so please feel free to ask us anything you know obviously there are certain lines that we might draw about our personal lives but apart from that uh, feel free to ask anything you want to and as i say we see uh, at the moment we're ears out we're talking to you and you're talking to us in lots of different ways but do please see this as being an introduction rather than a single moment where you can talk to us keep on doing that right so leaping in i believe have i said everything i need to guys i'm looking at rosanna and megan going yep 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 fine nothing else i need to alert you to yet uh, okay so just in case you don't know the audience agency I'm assuming that most people here probably do. I would just remind everybody that um, we are a, a national charity, uh, a nonprofit who's here to help share insights, to help organisations increase their snappily. We quite often use this, this notion of relevance, reach and resilience. So that's what we're all about. Um, we're very interested, as it says on the tin, in audiences and participation and engagement in the wider way. We work with literally hundreds of organisations every year, not just uh, cultural organisations, but also local authorities, policy bodies. And we do quite a lot of work internationally these days as well. As I say, we're interested in and our services are largely around audience development, both in a sort of you know strategic sense, as well as really hands on small stuff. Um, we do a lot of experience design related work these days, uh, working with evaluation, participation and learning as well. Um, the way we work, we like to think that we are all about being evidence led and people centred, slightly buzzwordy. But, you know, if I'm doing it on a few words on a slide, you get the gist around there. But in other words, we do, you know, we, we do do a lot of research and most of our consulting and advisory work is all really around making sure that it's research based. And we like to be people centred and, um, you know, working really closely with uh, to make sure that different voices are heard in the way that we design most of our programmes and, and our work. Um, we hope that we're useful in the sector to be as a sort of a hub for sharing data and knowledge. Our signature tools really represent that. As you know, we've been running, some of you will know, we've been running something called Audience Finder for the last 10 years. It's turning into something called Audience Answers. We can talk about that now. And it has running through it the thread that is also Audience Spectrum, which is our um, segmentation and profiling system, which looks at the whole population by their cultural interests. And apart from all of those things, we are, of course, a lovely team. And I'm delighted to be um, uh, sharing this event today with some of them. 
So that's us. Uh, OK, so let me just a little bit of background then to introduce the ideas of Audience Answers, this next generation tool that we are currently working on and offering. So um, some of you will know that uh, we have been offering some version of this thing called Audience Finder um, for around about 10 years. Uh, uh, quite a few of those were really prototyping what it might look like, working out how you could, say, use it in a museum setting, um, working out really, you know, really being quite focused on the mechanics, all the issues of how you could share data across literally hundreds of organisations. Um, in that time, I think it's fair to say that we have gone from being very interested in the logistics and the mechanics and being quite worried about how you actually make it work. You know, everything from ethics to data protection to thinking about different fund requirements, thinking about how you involve different bits of the sector. We were very, very hooked up, I think, on the technical details, should we say. Over time, we've become much more interested in the application and sort of user focus and how you as our users um, really are engaging with it and whether we're doing the right things or not and so actually we've long had in our roadmap this idea that we wanted to slightly redesign it so that we were reflecting what what we were learning about working with with you in different places in different ways over the last uh, as I say over you know just short of a decade so as I say I think we'd like to think that we really have de designed it with and for you and if we haven't then you need to keep telling us and that's what we're hoping that you will do uh, we do have lots of forums and ways in which people can engage with, with it. And I think Megan will be telling us a bit more about how that's going to look in the future. So there have been four big design principles behind how we think about going from what was Audience Finder to Audience Answers. Firstly, we heard loud and clear, we've done a couple of really uh, um, quite really interesting research programmes around the use of Audience Finder and people's attitudes towards cultural data in general. And one of the things that people said to us a lot was the thing is, I can look at these metrics, but I don't always know what to do with them. So we wanted to get this idea that everything, the way we present the information from now in, in a range of different ways is they're going to be on beyond just the metric. So we're going to be thinking about helping people to make sure that when you look at a, an insight of some kind, you know what to do next. What do I do now? So act actionable is our first really big um important design prism. The second one is really about being user first. As I say, that's we've learned how to be more user centered in the way that we actually design our, our um, products and services. But it's important to us that we prioritize the things that are useful to you. And one of the things you'll notice about Audience Answers is it has slightly less features across all of the different bits of the service. There aren't all the colors and all the sizes and you've got to work out which ones you want. Uh, it's much more tailored to you being able to group the things that you most need. So you're not blinded by metrics and charts and things. Um, so it's all about adapting with you. I think behind this also lies the idea that this is not just, this is much more about you as a user. It's not just about um, your funder's needs or indeed your funder being able to build um, their data set. This is about a tool that you can use. And we're really trying to think carefully about what that means. Um, the next principle is flexibility. Um, to be flexible, we have learned sometimes the hard way that organize, cultural organisations do not all come in one shape or size and they're not all trying to do the same thing at the moment. Don't all have the same levels of skill and confidence around some of these things and actually are trying to achieve different things when it comes to their audiences. So we really understand that not one size does not fit all. And we wanted to make services which were much more where you could mix and match the things that you wanted to put together to help you where you wherever you are right now. And I think the other thing to mention is there are a lot. I mean, it's fantastic. We're living in a world where there are many more analytics and data services available to us. I think you also need to be flexible about you might you're going to want to mix and match those quite quite rightly and I think we want to make sure that we're offering something that can fit in between the other things that that um, are available to you um, and finally networked so one of the most oh come back come back where have I done? Oh, no, 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 no. That's it. So networks. Um, one of the, the most important things that we learned about Audience Finder was how vital people found it to help them to work in collaboration with others. So one of the things that people have told us over and over again, they really like about it is the, the ways in which the kind of data cut down by geographic network level or an art form network level, how that has really helped to bind together 
um, a consortium or just a loosely network group of people. So it's partly about these kind of averages and networks and comparators. How are you doing? How are we doing? We've got our prices are too high. You know what, what's happening? Why are we losing all our audiences? So we know that's a really useful part of the conversation. But we've also seen around the country how that networked information, being able to join up your audience information, has helped people to see that they're working in an audience ecosystem to understand how they can work together to reach more audiences differently. So one of the things that we have really emphasized and we're building a lot of tools and a, and a whole new service led by Rosanna here that's really designed to help you to take that to the next level. So that was the fourth principle networked, actionable, user first, flexible, networked. And if we're not doing these things, you can come back and say, I think being actionable would include X or Y, and we would like to hear that. So I'm just going to end now before I hand on to Megan to talk about features by just talking a little bit about how then we've designed the packages and how they work at a sort of a top level. So thinking about all of those things, we thought about offering a subscription service with a, with some flexible add-ons, but so a subscription for service that has four, three main levels so that you can find the level that's for you. Um, this notion, the first level, the first plan level is really, they're, they're all based on the idea of there being um, uh, an annual subscription, but I think you can opt in and out of them if you, you can get out of it earlier than a, than a year if you want to. The snapshot level is really designed for perhaps either for light users, but not necessarily because you're small and have far too many other things to do, but it might also be that you're losing, using lots of other tools. So the free server, there's a free service there. It's quick and easy. It's just about the basics. It's probably about doing the things that we can really help people with that we can, we can do more than better than others can. There's something around essentials. So this is a package which, depending on which bits you choose to put into it, is between 1,200 and 2,600 pounds a year. The idea of that is it's quite self-service. Um, it's all about having those actual insights within a dashboard and some extras in terms of people to help in particular. One of the things that people really said they liked and was to have somebody available to talk to them about what they were doing, to be able to talk to their peers about what it was about and so on. And so that's that's built into that. Whereas the in-depth version, which is um, the sort of the top end, if you like, is really um, a much more sort of ha um, uh, bespoke version of it. So it's the core service with the features that you really want some extras um, around that, plus um, more active support from some of our expert team. Um, you know, in terms of you know, being able to talk through what some of these things mean and so on. So that's the idea. Uh, so that that idea of kind of creating a so, something flexible that can work for you at any given time. And then within that, there are these different tools. Yes, there is kind of standardized surveying, as you might expect. Uh, one of the kind of great features that, of course, is that if you've been doing this for a long time, that will give you that longevity to look at the trends across your audience over time. There is ticketing analysis. We've got a whole new service called Coach, which I'm going to let Megan talk, talk about because she is our head coach. And I'm going to let Rosanna talk about networks. So you can imagine that within each of those areas under the snapshot, you get certain features within the survey, you get certain features within essentials, and you can mix and match these things. So I'm not going to go into the details of those things. They are online at the moment and we're adding new information all the time. But I suppose just the last thing to say is actual insight. That's the, the important principle across all of those things. Um, people you can talk to at all levels and this notion of interactive dashboards, things that you really want in the dashboards so that you can play and get the things you need. And then finally, and really importantly, audience spectrum, uh, the audience spectrum, national segmentation, the profiles, maps embedded across all the tools. So whew, I hope you caught half of that because I think I was speaking far too quickly as usual, but don't worry, we're coming back to some of these features. Megan, all yours. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Megan. For audio description purposes, I'm a white woman. I've got sort of middling length, dark brown hair. Uh, I'm wearing a blue and white shirt in my living room in Manchester. Um, lovely to see you. Lovely to see a few familiar faces as well. Um, some people that I know, some people that I don't. Um, you're all very welcome. Um, my job title is not head coach. I should just, just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, I might. I should have brought a you know a cap and a whistle and some trainers or something with with me, shouldn't I? Um, but no, um, I'm just going to pick up on um, some a little bit more of the detail that, that that Anne touched on there and the kind of shape of um, what the audience answer survey looks uh, survey service looks like quite practically. Some of this will be quite familiar to you if you've been a um, previous audience finder user with us. There are some changes, um, but we've kind of kept a lot of the principles the same. So hopefully it's not all new. 
So if you've been using Audience Finder um, with us in the past, Audience Finder Original or Show Stats, you, it's very likely that you would have been contributing either um, ticketing data or survey data or potentially both into Audience Finder and that's then processed and output into, um, you know, kind of useful charts and, and ways of viewing your data. That's still there. Um, ticketing is uh, very much still an integral part of the new Audience Answers dashboard, which is live now, um, launched in April. It's, if you've got a login for um, the old Audience Finder original, that will work for Audience Answers. And uh, a lot of ticketing data is already in there. Um, we've got automated feeds set up with um, Spectrix, Ticketsolve and Tessitura. So if you're, if you're with those organisations, you'll see all of your ticketing metrics there. And the kind of principles behind it are um, kind of picking up on those, those design principles that, that Anne spoke about there, is that it's allowing you to benchmark. Um, and one thing that is in there now, which is it's, it's, a, it's a newbie feature uh, that we didn't have in original, is the ability to benchmark against organisations of a similar size. Previously, the benchmarking was just regional based. Um, but of course, if you're a tiny performing arts centre, you perhaps don't want to compare yourself to the giant art gallery down the road. So now we're looking at kind of um, more kind of meaningful um, benchmarks in there. You can map your catchment area. Um, there's also a, a, a quite nifty little feature there that maps your catchment area now versus the pre-pandemic days, uh, which is which might be interesting to some. Um, we've certainly had some conversations with people who feel like their audiences are really different now to how they were um, uh, in, the, in the before times, but there's a mapping feature there that lets you have a look at that. Uh, there are lots of metrics in there to allow you to kind of look at your sales, to look at your bookers, to look at your ticket yield, your income, and to compare with previous periods. You know, this six month period versus the last six month period is all still there. We're bringing in some functionality for touring organisations. If you're a touring organisation out there, hello, lovely to have you in the room, get in touch with us. Um, you've probably been using show stats in the past. Um, we are bringing in some, some options for you as well. So you're very much not left out of this. Um, there will be something available there for you. Um, yes, as, as noted there, we've got those kind of automated feeds set up with Spectrix, Tickets Off and Tessitura. Other systems are coming soon, you know, uh, watch this space um, and, you know, get in touch if you'd like to be set up. Um, we certainly will do our best to bring everyone on board as we can. And new features are um, always going to be being added constantly. Um, and the, the thing about the new features is that they're very much kind of led by led by what's a priority for for you and for organisations who are using this. So this is really an opportunity to let us know what you'd like, what would be useful in there um, as well. It's uh, we're really keen to be kind of quite responsive to what people are telling us. So if you've got thoughts about what there's now, what's there now, brilliant. Let us know. If you're like, oh, would it be really handy if I could do X? let us know as well and because you know it all helps us to kind of prioritize what comes in next so that's a quick fly through ticketing the other side of the how data comes in um, uh, um, aspect is surveys again if you've worked with us before or you've been um, required to by your national funder you will be very familiar with um, with our surveys um, Surveys are, uh, again, up and running. There's an offer there ready for you to um, sign up to. They launched in April, as it says there. Um, we've already got 45 organisations on board with the, the new batch of 2023 onwards surveys. Um, just to point out, these are completely compatible with your um, funder requirements. So if you are needing to report to Arts Council England, for example, through the new Illuminate platform, if you set up a survey with us, we will automatically include all of those questions that Arts Council England need you to collect. And then you can pull that data out of audience answers, pass that on to Illuminate um, whenever is needed. Likewise, we've also got um, compatible offers for those organisations that are funded by um, Creative Scotland or Arts Council Wales, and there's a Welsh language version that's available there as well. Uh, there's kind of three, three tiers to the survey offer, so it is a new, new model for how we do surveys and how we, how we price surveys. Uh, hopefully a little bit simplified from what we've had in the past and hopefully going to um, work for you, but again, tell us if it's not and we'll, you know, we can adapt services as we go. Essentially, there's a basic level survey that is free for everybody. And if you want to get a bit more bespoke, adding questions or adding bespoke questions, there will be some, some costs attached to that, but obviously we'll try and keep it as reasonable as possible. 
Um, just say as well, you've the eagle eyed amongst you, or just those with very good eyesight might have spotted that the uh, screen grab there we've got um, is actually um, uh, in German. Um, and that's because we are actually working with some international partners. Um, so we do have some, some international data coming in as well. We will have a survey report that looks very like that, but will be in English, I promise, if you're not fluent in German, I'm not. Um, so yeah, lots of options for surveys, all the flexibility of all those um, uh, different optional questions is all still there. We've got an enormous question library that you can pick from and add to your surveys from as well. And then there will be reporting functionalities for those surveys in the audience answers dashboard in the same way that you've had in your, your um, former audience finder dashboard. Great. Uh, so, coach, yes, which apparently me, apparently me. <laughs> we, were, we were talking earlier about whether that graphic's actually meant to be me or not. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment anyway. Um, so this is a new, um, a new element of our service and was kind of born out of um, that idea about wanting to become as, as kind of relevant as, as, as we can be really, that we're not just providing you with, um, you know, bunches of charts and tables and saying, off you go, go and go and do something with this. But we're actually kind of trying to make it a bit more actionable and a bit more real world. Um, and lots of us in the team here have come from working in venues or working for cultural organizations and being that very busy marketing person with a million and one priorities on your plate and how do I make sense of all of this and I've got data from this and data from that and what does it mean and what do I do with it but also potentially just being just not quite knowing where to start you know perhaps you've never um you've never done any sort of audience analysis at all and you don't really know how to go about it or, or what would be most effective and what would be most useful Perhaps you have done loads of audience analysis, but you're now sat with reams of data in front of you and thinking, what on earth does this mean and how do I actually apply this? So with that in mind, um, we've kind of got a, a, a team of people here with lots of different experience across, um, you know, across the sector. Um, come, come to us, come and have a chat with us. We're a friendly face. We've been there before. We've been in your shoes. We get what it's like um, and we can hopefully help shape that kind of thinking a little bit for you and just be a kind of you know a, a person to bounce ideas off and thoughts off of really and it doesn't matter how much experience you've got I mean literally no no question is too small you know if you're just starting out and you're thinking gosh what is all of this that's absolutely fine that's exactly who we're here for um so it's about maybe potentially coming and talking to us about practical tactics you know how can I put this stuff into practice in my day-to-day -day work Perhaps it's getting to grips with um, audience spectrum, our segmentation tool, you know, um, okay, what do these, what do these names of segments mean? And how do I actually practically go out and engage with these people? What are the things that, that might help me engage with them? And, and, you know, where would I find them? And how do I talk to them? Perhaps it's about thinking about um, how you can get a little bit more out of the data that you've got available to, to you. And that doesn't have to be data that you've kind of used our services for it doesn't have to be an audience answers survey or your audience answers ticketing feed it could be some survey that you've done independently you know through SurveyMonkey or whatever it could be some information that you've got from a local authority or the office of national statistics you know bring us your data <laughs> and let's have a look at it together and let's have a chat through what might be going on there and what that could could mean for you um, you might want to talk about how that data could support your um, funding applications. You know, do you need to evidence your impacts? You know, sadly, in this day and age, we, we so need to be on that, you know, improving our impact. You know, um, it's, it's so important to be able to kind of evidence what we're doing and prove to the powers that be, whoever they are, that we're, we're, we're worth investing and we're worth supporting as a sector. So if we can if we can help with that and we can help make sure that you're gathering the right data to be able to evidence that and to be able to have those conversations with funders, donors, even internally, even your own senior management team or your board, then then absolutely that's something we can help with. And then finally on there, looking for those opportunities for audience development. Um, you know, you've got, got a ton of data perhaps, but but where is the um uh, where's the potential? You know, we've all got you know, limited resources in terms of time, money, um, and where can we best prioritise that resource in your individual context? Because obviously, we'd love everyone to be coming to all of our stuff all the time, but that's not practical. You know, where can we really, really target and, and be effective? So that's the, that's, that's the kind of gist behind the service there. What it looks like practically is 
an hour to an hour and a half um, uh, online call uh, with me or one of my colleagues um, just have a chat we'd have obviously have a bit of prep time beforehand just to discuss what what you need we'd have a look at look at any any data we needed to in advance or anything you wanted to send us to look through and then we'd spend that hour hour and a half at time that suits you just kind of talking through and hopefully you know getting some good solid actions to come out of it so that's live now there's a booking form online um it'll come to me so now you know my face that's that's me that that form will come to um and yeah look hopefully that will be something that's that's useful um oh sorry i'm just conscious of the time so i'm going to rattle through the next couple of slides quite quickly um and rosanna is going to speak in a bit more detail about audience spectrum as well but just to say um audience spectrum again if you're familiar with our services from you know, previous years, um, audience spectrum is our segmentation tool. It's all about um, a site. You know, using using the data that we have about um, about the entire UK population to segment by attitudes to arts and culture, lifestyle, how people behave, and that then to help you engage with them. It's not going anywhere. It's very much still here. It's very much still going to be a central part of everything we're doing. Uh, you'll see your, um, if you've got a ticketing feed set up with us, you'll see your ticketing data um, split out by audience spectrum type already. Um, same will be true of uh, surveys as well when you've got your kind of survey responses back in. Uh, we can add all sorts of enhancements onto audience spectrum uh, we can uh, we, second point on there we mentioned audience spectrum licensing which is where we effectively tag every um every record on your customer database with an audience spectrum uh, segment and sub segment as well so you can get really granular about it and then you can do your own um kind of quite sophisticated uh you know kind of tailoring of mailing lists to to go really at, at one particular segment or your own analysis in your database it opens up a lot of opportunities there to us if that's something you're interested in uh we can do workshops with you again in person or online really exploring those segments uh looking at objectives looking at uh creating some personal personas to help you really get under the skin of, of who these who these segments are and what might work for them and what might be most effective for them um and just a, a final point on there um we are looking at um doing some some automation around those um what inspection licenses so that it, hopefully the hope in time is that they will be almost live updates of your of your system um we're nearly there we're nearly there keep keep <laughs> keep an eye on things as we go very finally oh i've run over i have run over by a minute already um our evidence and insight section um this is really worth going and having a look at it's a section of the now live audience answers dashboard you don't need a login for it um if you're not set up as a user yet you still have access to this you can still get to this and it's kind of a my uh, my colleague Ollie did a, um, a presentation last week, which some of you may have been at, kind of introducing this in more detail. Um, it's on YouTube if anyone wants to, anyone wants to have a look. But essentially, it's kind of a home for all the big picture research we're doing, um, uh, where you can get uh, kind of the latest stuff from out, for example, from the cultural participation monitor, which is our long term study into how behaviour is changing or where people's priorities are lying as things like the cost of living crisis develop or, um, you know, as we recover from the pandemic. There's also stuff in there around national sales trends in a national sales tracker dashboard. Uh, and there's there's loads of stuff looking at the kind of national big picture by art form and by region as well, as well as a really snazzy, really snazzy is my word of the day um audience spectrum map i am a total map nerd so i was so excited when i saw this and lost several hours one afternoon to, to mucking about with a map but you can have a lot of fun looking at the audience spectrum segmentation across the whole country and zooming in and zooming out and seeing what's going on there um would thoroughly recommend going and having a, a little look through that it's a really really valuable resource finally finally very quick um Again, Rosanna is going to pick up on this much, much more, but networks are like the, the another strand of the whole audience answers um, offer a very, very important strand um, speaks back to those design principles about um, working together in collaboration. It's about creating groups of other organisations that are similar size, similar interests, similar backgrounds and working together to share data and collaborate. And I'm not going to talk any more about those because Rosanna is the expert in the room. And I'm going to let her pick up from there, if that's OK. And I'll stop sharing now. I'm Rosanna um, and I am going to be talking to you 
all about the sort of networks offer just for audio description purposes i'm a white woman in my 30s covered in freckles I'm wearing a green top um and yeah we'll, we'll kick off with that was it's lovely to to see so many uh, familiar uh, names in the chat coming up and i just wanted to say, say a special hello to paper birds um i have a sort of a soft spot for them as an early career baby programmer um your work had a big impact um, and I, I think I, I programmed to being a program thirsty and I watched in a thousand pieces. They were brilliant pieces of work. So I just want to say hello. And I think I'm right in saying you're new MPO. So welcome, if that's the case, to, to that side of things. And any other new MPOs that are looking for some sort of uh, kind of like guidance and things like that. Obviously, we've been working with MPOs for a long time. And as we say, we can match the, the Illuminate question set there for you and, and cover those needs. So say hello to in a creepy way to you guys. Um, welcome everybody else as well. But networks, so I won't go too fast, but I will skip through. Um, but if there's anything else that, that you need in terms of info, we have stuff on the website in the dashboard and there's information as well. And if you're interested at all, just having a one-to-one -one chat about networks, then please do get in contact and, and we can talk more specifically about your needs. So this is just very brief. But in a nutshell, um, we have been doing networks at the audience agency for a long time. It's not a new concept at all, as Anne said in the intro. We've been doing, we've been working with clusters, groups and um, consortiums um, at the audience agency, whether they're consortiums and groups we've, we've designed or pre-existing, we, and we've come along and, and supported with the data um, and connected to the uh, conversations. Um, but what we're doing now is kind of formalizing it into a, an offer that is something that we've got an open call out um, for organizations to get involved with either open networks we have that exist that you want to join, or if you're interested in forming a brand new network, um, we're now in a position um, to be talking much more about that um, with audience answers having launched as well. So fundamentally, we've got connecting with like minded arts sector professionals at the heart of it, combining efforts to engage audiences, comparing your data and your ideas and cultivating your approaches. And I should say that networks will meet you where you're at um, at TAA. So um, we'd love you to be using our, our systems and collecting data through us. But in fact, if you're not, you can still actually um, work with us in a network. And we welcome you with open arms, whoever you're using to collect your, your data, however you're collecting it. We want to see you achieve more as part of a network with us. Um, so what does that look like um, and how could a network support your ambitions? Well, we work with organisations in networks that are looking to come together around place as a theme, around art form as a theme or around audience type or all of the above. So some of our networks are place and art form, so a, a geolocation um, specific um, network that's looking um, at everything to do with an area, also everything to do in the art form um, and crossing those over, or it can be completely separate, um, or of course audience type when we're thinking about um, networks that are looking at family audiences or particular types of audiences that they're trying to reach and they're coming together on that topic. So there's a range of ambitions that we can help you um, uh, support you to get your um, your outcomes on. How does it make a difference? I wanted to include here that um, we've got had some very positive feedback from existing network members and this is some of the stuff that they've said recently to me um, that the networks have helped them with. So uh, the group accountability really helped me keep track of goals and deadlines um, and that was a really good factor um, uh, and helped them sort of in terms of motivation through the project. Um, I was able to show senior management the data which in the wider context of the group helped us explain our metrics and supported our funding applications. There's definitely been used in, in either collaborative or single funding applications. And then um, this just, I think, is, is quite a nice one that I just really appreciated having a group of people to chat to about this stuff. Um, sometimes I can feel a bit lost. And that was just a really honest bit of feedback about actually sometimes uh, sat on your own with a with an issue with data, using data or or just something in terms of audience development it's really good to share and um, so yeah fundamentally our networks really help with that too this is the call to action 
we want you to see that this is a possibility um, and that you, you would be maybe interested in joining a network or just finding out more. So to find out more, the email address at the top there, networks at theaudienceagency.org. Um, you may be part of an existing network and you would like um, the audience agency to help you and, and support. And we've done that work as well in the past. Um, so there might be a, a membership group that you're part of consortium or something else and be interested in us coming along and, and um, complementing your work there or if you've got a great idea for forming a new TAA network and you might have an idea of who those members could be or you might want our help in identifying new members for a new network and uh, we'd be interested in hearing from from and on any of those um, sides of it so please do get in touch. So I'll quickly now go through audience answers and audience spectrum. Hopefully um, you are familiar that audience spectrum is something that is not, is not new. Um, but if you are brand new to audience spectrum, this is just a taster um, because I believe we're going to be doing another session where we go in much more detail into audience spectrum and um, what you can do with it and putting it into action. So I just wanted to give you a little, a little flavor of it in this session. Um, so hopefully you know, but if you're not familiar, audience spectrum is our segmentation tool that looks uh, to profile individuals on their behavior towards the arts. There are 10 core segments and there are sub segments within that that have been updated recently and these distinct profiles are located by postcode and it, it's um, mapped across the entire uh, UK so the entire uh, population is included in this um, segmentation really handy. It remains the most accurate tool um, the sector has ever had to help uh, target audiences and it includes the wider public so it's not just thinking about your your own audience data it's actually obviously population data which is super useful the idea would be um has been and it has achieved this i believe this sort of shared language for the uk sector so quite often especially in networks actually we talk a lot across um how groups how we're coming together um to look at trying to reach a certain segment and we'll just use the shorthand of our frontline families or uh, kaleidoscope creativity and the other names and um, because that's it's quite handy to have that shared language we all know we're talking about that language is here so if you're not familiar here is a quick look at what uh, that list of, of the segments looks like. There's lots of information on our segmentation on our website and also you will find this information in your dashboard as well um, and the next session will cover this off so I'm mindful of time and I won't go through each of the segments now but if you would like any more information off the back of this um, this quick uh, chat here then please get in touch or our website or we'll come along to the next next one. Um, but yeah, just a quick reminder of what makes it unique, special and important. Um, it's new and improved. So we've got approximately 2,000 users, sorry, um, plus, and it's the only geolocation segmentation for culture in the UK. So it's really important that that, um, that, that is uh, the factor at the heart of, of the segmentation tool for us. It's based on real data and it's profiling whole population as mentioned, and it is relevant to all cultural organisations. We know we've tested it um, thoroughly and we know that uh, organisations of all shapes and sizes get a lot of use out of it. It describes your community, so not just your audiences that you know are through your door, but actually who you could be serving as well, which is great. And it's got it includes profiling cultural relevant behaviours, preferences, lifestyles and attitudes. And we believe it's truly actionable and we've got proof of that. Um, so audience development, community engagement, programming, marketing, user journeys, fundraising, partnerships. We know that you can take what our segmentation tool offers and, and turn it into action. And that's really critical. So to get even more personal, we have mentioned this already and there was a good question about this, but we offer, um, so not only in dashboard and in reporting that you can get from us in coaching you can get from us and, and networks you can get from us, you can use the, the segmentation tool, but actually we give it back to you to use in your own tools through um, licensing. So you can and buy a license, an annual subscription from us and make it actionable inside your own box of the system which is amazing. Um, again, we've got more info on the website, so please do take a look. But um, Chris popped up um, to answer the question on that um, and is available if you, if you need to ask any more. 
on that really quickly because we're going to go into this in much more detail in the in the follow-up that I keep mentioning the, the second session I think it's happening in June um, we'll be we'll be going into this but I wanted to share this at this point because it's a really good example of that action and, and how you can take the audience um, spectrum and make it work for you and your organization this is the brilliant Rochdale Borough Council and the Feel Good Festival it was part of the Without Walls um, we work with the Without Walls Consortium, the Outdoor Arts um, Partnership Group, a great bunch of venues, organisations and festivals that come together um, and look at their data together with us. And um, this was shared as part of our, um, our case study in action um, sort of session that we ran with them. So Rochdale, they used audience, it was Audience Finder at the time, now it would be Audience Answers, of course, with their website analytics, with their comparator analysis, they did some gaps research and focus groups. So, so yes, Audience Finder, as it was then, was, it was a big component, but there were other factors. And they um, started to profile some, um, some individuals off the back of that for their um, audience engagement work. So here we can see that they, they looked at Hashtags, they looked at what they'd be interested in, they looked at websites, they profiled um, using, um, using data. And they came up with um, Hannah. So they did some uh, profiling and they came up with a, an individual called Hannah that was a certain age. You can see there the interests. And um, what they actually did then was take, they extended that out and, and placed Hannah on the spectrum of where she would be between trips and treats and, and it was Facebook families then, it's now frontline families. And they mapped out a typical day for Hannah and that left, left them with lots of um, things to explore in terms of adapting their website copy, their marketing materials, doing an audience development plan that let them kind of um, really flesh out who Hannah was and how they could speak to her uh, and work with her. This kind of persona workshopping we know is really, really, crucial so what we're going to do is in the next session we're going to sort of demo that a little bit more and sort of really expand out on how you can use our segmentation tool and put it into action but we wanted to just just trial it there and give you a flavor of it but that's everything for me on networks and audience um, spectrum so just a quick timeline so most of the things we've been talking about now we've been talking about just now are um already available so the services are all up and running you can um you can uh, design your survey start collecting survey data uh, you can plug into the ticketing system and you can join a network. Um, as we've said, all of those things are compatible with those three funders and can be used for local authority reporting talks if you'd like to know how. Um, we've talked about the fact that the we've just moved all our new evidence stuff with all the latest trends into the um, audience answers um, uh, platform. So quite excitingly, there's there's lots of things to go and look at there, including um, a new population change report that looks at the differences between what's happening out there in the public between 2011 and 2021, the, mo the most recent census. Um, and there's also something we haven't talked about today, this new report for touring companies, very important. Um, coming online any minute now. So um, I mentioned the fact that the, the full survey report, be able to see all your um, all your uh, answers um, neatly displayed live um, is coming on in the next few weeks. Um, you'll also be able to add in those bespoke questions to the survey that's also coming on as part of the service. Um, there will be some new ticketing integrations because if you're not with Spectrix or Ticket Solve or uh, Tessitura, um, you, that some of those new systems are going to be available, I think, by the end of the July, we're hoping. And the automated audience spectrum integration with your CRM or box office, as we've just been discussing, that will be available. Uh, another feature of that, of course, once they've got that in, that means you're going to be able to profile your um, future audiences as well. You can see who has so far booked for what. And I think that's going to be an amazing thing to be able to look at and think, oh, goodness, we need to push this harder at certain um, uh, spectrum groups and so on. Um, the new ticketing features for the essential the essentials and premium ticketing um, offers at the moment, that's just the free snapshot offer. Uh, do go and have a look at that if you're in one of those ticketing companies. But the new uh, essentials and um, uh, premium services around ticketing and the new insights with that are going to be launched in the autumn. So keep an eye out. And if you're not already on our newsletter list, please join it because we can tell you as those things are coming out. And as I say, because we're just working out exactly what functionality we're going to put in that first wave at the moment, we've got mo most things, but there's still a little bit of room for maneuver. And we're really keen um, to hear from you if there's anything you particularly like to see there. Okay.
Thank you all so much for joining us.